Hi everyone, this week I'm going to be taking some molds that I have and painting them with my micas. Um, this one right there is a resin mold and then my other two molds are silicone molds. I don't have a lot of little detailed molds like this because I feel like the detail never shows up. So what I'm going to do is take the micas that I have on hand and mix them with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. Um, I like to put mine in the paint palettes and then use some little brushes that I got at a craft store. Um, I have these because I like painting as well. I use them for all kinds of things, um, but it works for painting micas as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and start getting everything set up, and I'm going to paint each one of these molds to get started. Um, you really just need like a tiny bit, like a little scoop of your mica, and then um, a little bit of the rubbing alcohol to get started. One thing that I will recommend doing is that when you do add the rubbing alcohol to the mica, I would put a lot more mica than rubbing alcohol and I wish I would have gotten one of my little droppers so I could just put a few drops of the rubbing alcohol in because it would have worked a lot better. Um, also the rubbing alcohol evaporates quite quickly so if you like go away for 15 or 20 minutes most likely uh, most of your rubbing alcohol is going to start evaporating. So I just went ahead and kind of painted these um, to kind of see what worked. I wasn't sure if my resin mold was going to work or not, but I just thought that it would be nice to kind of paint them and do the shading right on the mold um, to see how it would turn out as opposed to painting the actual little soap embeds themselves. Um, one thing that I'm doing with my paintbrush as well, which might be kind of hard to see, but I'm kind of using the side of the paint palette to kind of get some of that additional like liquid from the rubbing alcohol off of the paintbrush so it's not like making a slimy mess everywhere um, and muddying the colors. So that is one thing to keep in mind. Um, this is kind of how it looked. The alcohol still hasn't fully evaporated but you can kind of see there what it looks like. Now um, if you're wanting to know how long to kind of let these sit aside before you move them or anything like that or before you go ahead and put the soap I would say about 15 to 20 minutes is enough time um, every you know mixture is going to be a little bit different just depending on how much rubbing alcohol you have in it now when you're painting micas on your soap you can actually do it the other way around but I kind of want to just experiment with painting the actual molds themselves and show you guys how it will come out um, I've done it both ways. Um, I would say there's definitely benefits to both ways, um, but I just thought I would show you how this worked. And sorry guys, I'm making a mess. That orange mica is in my tote with all the other micas and it's just everywhere. Um, I don't know, I think I didn't screw the cap on once or something. But you can kind of see with this, like I am painting a little bit like of the orange around and then I go back and I fill it in with the pink to kind of give it a little bit more detail and kind of blend the colors a little bit. Um, I wish I had a really large mold with a lot of detail because I think that would be really fun to make like one giant soap and do it that way. Um, but basically I just, like I said, let these sit for about 15 minutes or so and let all the alcohol evaporate. And then once that was done, I went ahead and started cutting down my soap so I could pour it in the little molds. So for this tutorial, I'm using just some white um, soap base. You can use anything you want though. You don't have to use this. Um, I like this soap base a lot except for the only thing is it does set up really quick and the skin on the top of the soap sets up well. Um, I was kind of wanting to save this for like a suspended um, soap where you like keep a like intricate design but this is all that I had left so that's what we're using today. So I'm just cutting down a little bit just to fill up these molds. I probably won't even use all this but if I have leftovers I'm going to use it for the actual soap that I end up making with this. Now if you're going to do the method where you're painting the molds first and then pouring the soap, I would highly recommend that you get the soap temperature as low as you can. I would say closer to 130 is going to be the best bet um, because it's really close to setting up. Like I said though, I was a little bit worried about this base because it does form a skin really quickly. Um, so I was trying to keep that in mind when I was mixing this and getting ready to pour it. You also would li like it's best if you don't pour it directly onto the soap. So if you have like a bigger soap mold with more detail, um, I would recommend kind of like pouring it on your spatula and then just kind of letting it disperse. I kind of tried to do that with this, but it was 
a little bit hard because the, like the mold cavities are so tiny. So, um, you know, it's just kind of one of those things that you have to experiment with and every soap base is going to be like a little bit different. So I let these sit for about 25 to 30 minutes before I pop them out of the mold to make sure the soap was all the way hardened. I like the details of this flower. Um, I think it would be a little bit better if I painted directly on the soap itself, but I know sometimes like the um, details get a little bit muddied. I really like the heart with like all the swoopy lines going through it. That one was my favorite. Um, and then this resin mold that I had, it was really hard to get the melt and pour soap out of. Um, I've used these little resin molds before for other soaps and they're just, I would not recommend trying to use melt and pour soap in these. Um, I know you can pop them in the freezer and then they'll pop out much easier, but I didn't want to like get any condensation on these soaps when I was doing them. So, um, they didn't come out the way I wanted them anyway because I just, I don't think I should have mixed the color more like blended the color it just looked kind of messy so I ended up not using the little macarons so I'm only gonna make two bars of soap and I like to just kind of mix my mica in there directly and spritz with a little bit of rubbing alcohol and mix it in and then I added my fragrance oil as well um, I decided I wanted to do like a layered ombre effect too just to kind of make it a little bit cuter so what I basically do is put the most amount of color, pigment, or mica that I want in the first layer and then I just cut down more of the white base and I add it to it. So I'm not adding any additional color on each layer. I'm just kind of um, adding more white so it gets lighter as we go up because I want these embeds to pop out at the top and um, just kind of pop with the full white. So each time I add a little bit more, I'm just using a little chunk of soap and I'm leaving about that much to fill the cavities of the soap. So that way you get an idea um, how to achieve this look if you want to do something similar. Um, and then, like I said, I've already added the white in there and I'm just letting it mix um, in and then I'm going to pour it. Um, one thing about the SFC or SFIC base is that the skin forms really quickly, but the soap underneath it is really still liquidy, which I kind of forgot. So when if you try to score the top, it's going to jerk the skin around. It's been a while since I used this base, so um, I just wanted to point that out. The whole Crafter's Choice soap base that I use does not do that. Um, it's just a personal preference, though. They both still work and get the job done. I don't like one more over the other. It's just they work for better things or work better for different things. So I kind of just poked the soap and if you're not like familiar with layering soap you kind of just do this so that the soap sticks together well and it adheres like all the layers adhere well. Um, it's kind of like making pottery or something if you've ever done that you just kind of score the top, spritz it with your rubbing alcohol and then pour the next layer. Um, I did kind of have to be careful though because like this base if it's too hot it'll like melt through that tiny little layer that I just kind of moved around. So I kind of had to be careful when I was doing this and come back later um, when I poured the second layers because it was like breaking through the other layer. So I wasn't like upset about it but it wasn't exactly like what I wanted again. <laughs> I always mess something up on these videos. <laughs> So on this last layer, I wanted it to be really white, so I just got another container and I melted down just the white base with no pigment in it. And I'm going to go ahead and pour this on top, and then I'm going to place the embeds. They, the pink layer is just at enough height so that the embeds shouldn't sink all the way down. Um, I did kind of have an issue with one of the hearts. It didn't come out the way I wanted it, so I kind of just... Uh, made it sink so it's somewhere floating around in the soap um, but it's okay again this was kind of an experiment just to show you guys how to do this if you wanted to do it on your own um, I think it does take a little bit of practice to get it just right and a little bit of patience which we all know I'm not very patient so on the heart one like some of the pink started to show through which ended up at the end being kind of cute again not what I intended but it still worked out um, and then the skin again formed so quickly on the soap I was a little bit bummed out about it but I'm not going to let it bother me because these are just again for my personal use. Um, and then I kind of cheated a little bit too with the sunflower one because the skin was starting to harden up way quicker than 
the embed would kind of like sink to where it needed to go. So I ended up using my heat gun a little bit to kind of like get rid of that blemish. But then it was like melting the actual sunflower itself a little bit. So you have to be careful if you do that. Um, I don't really recommend it unless it's like an emergency situation and it's only a tiny bit that you need to correct. So I let the soap sit for about three or four hours before I actually popped them out of the mold. And overall, I think this was a good like first attempt on this type of design. Um, I like the heart one a lot better. I think it came out cuter. I just wish all three hearts would have stayed, you know, floating. Um, and then you can see the layers on the side. They came out pretty good, um, even though the soap kind of slipped around. And then you can see the sunflower, see how it got a little bit melted and sad. So again, don't really recommend the heat gun, but, you know, just trying to save the look. And it ended up making a lot of waves. So thank you guys for watching the video. I appreciate it. Um, I love all the support that you guys give me. Don't forget to like and subscribe because it does help the channel a, a lot. Thank you.